Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to do a hand tie. Today I'm going to show you how to do a hand tie to form a reef knot, a slip knot and a surgeon's knot. I'm going to start with using this rope that I have and then I'll progress onto an instrument tie using sutures. This rope I was given at one of the workshops that we did and it's really nice. It's basically a shoelace that's been code, color coded on each end. You can use anything you have at home from a belt uh, to a piece of ribbon, anything that will work. And then you just need something to tie around. In this case, I've just used this acrylic loop. <clears throat> now for this demonstration, uh, you can do this with either left or right hand. I'm going to start with the right hand. Let's pretend that the needle is on the tip of this blue rope. You're going to suture towards yourself. So place your suture through the tissue and pull it towards yourself and keep it safe, which means that you're then going to be left with the free end of your suture material. Hold the free end of your suture material in your right hand between your middle finger and your thumb and extend your index finger out. You're then going to bring your suture material up into what looks like a little four, if you can imagine it creatively there. This is what some people call the overhand four or the extended index procedure. You then take your index finger, wrap it around this end and loop it through and you're going to pull it towards yourself. That creates the first loop of your reef knot. This free hand then flips over and you bring this needle end close uh, into a loop over your hand and you'll see that it creates a beautiful loop like that. Some people make the mistake of not letting it fall over the hand but bringing it this way around and there you can see it's not as round and loopy as it should be so just be careful of that bring it over so that it forms a circular loop now you've got both pieces lying parallel to each other you're going to take your middle finger take it over the outside under the inside and use that to push this free piece down and extend it away from you and that's going to bring your knot into this beautiful reef knot shape. This is a secure knot that then is going to keep the tissue in place. It won't slip. So to show you again, you take your suturing material, place it through the tissue, pull it towards yourself. Take the free end of your suture material between your in middle finger and thumb, extend your index finger, and bring the suture material up into a fall. Take your index finger around and press the loop through. Pull that towards yourself. Now you're going to just flip this hand over, place your other end in parallel to it on your hand, middle finger goes over and under and extend that away from yourself and that's going to bring you into your beautiful reef knot. That is the reef knot completed. Now to show you the reef knot with the left hand. Again, you've sutured your material through, pulled it towards yourself. You have your end of your suture in your left hand. Here, you're gonna do exactly the same. Suture material between your middle finger and thumb. Extend your index finger out. Bring your suture material up to create a four. Your index finger wraps around and pushes the suture material through and pulls it towards yourself. Left hand flips over, you allow this material to run parallel and your middle finger does the work here where it goes over and under and allows that one to fall through and there is your beautiful reef knot. So it's good to practice this on left and right hand as you may be standing on different sides of the table or sometimes be suturing in funny positions. Okay, now to show you a slip knot. A slip knot is really useful when you want to still create tension on the suture material. So whereas a reef knot secures the suture material and it cannot um, increase or decrease the size of the knot, a slip knot allows you to really still create some tension and close the loop uh, and then seal it with a reef knot. So a slip knot is basically the same. You bring your suture material through the tissue, pull it down towards you, you're going to have the tail of the suture material in your hand. Again, between your middle finger and your index finger, lift up the suture material to create a four, bring it around and pull it towards yourself. So the first one is exactly the same. Now, instead of flipping the hand and doing our second knot, 
you're going to do the same thing again. So you're going to create the same knot again. And what you'll see there is that this actually creates a knot that is a slip knot. So that one allows to push the suture material down to as tight as we need and then lock it with that middle finger knot over it. So you have a slip knot on the one side and a reef knot on the other side. Very useful if you need to create a little bit of tension still within your suture. A slip knot is not stable. So if you by mistake are not watching what your hands are doing and not pulling uh, away from yourself in each of the knots to create a beautiful reef knot, and you by mistake do two the same way, you're gonna create a slip knot. And a slip knot is not a tight knot. It's not one that is going to um, be stable within the tissue. It will come loose. Okay, now for the last one is a surgeon's knot. And a surgeon's knot is basically a reef knot with a double throw. So again, we've brought the, the suture material through towards us. We've got the middle finger and the thumb with the extended index finger. And here what we want to do is do the first throw and then allow the second throw to happen as well. And what we've got there, as you can see, is two throws that have gone around. When you place that down, there you can see instead of it being one single throw, it's two. Now the same thing happens on the other hand. So you take your right hand, flip it over and create the second loop. And instead of just having a single throw, you're now going to double throw it. So as you can see there, it's gone round twice and that becomes a surgeon's knot. It's basically a double reef knot. Very stable knot, less likely to slip. And again, it will stay in position. It won't tighten as you tighten it there in the tissue. That is how it's going to remain. Let me show that to you one more time. So you put your needle through, suture towards yourself, bring the tail up towards you, suturing material between your middle finger and thumb, index finger extended to create your four. You're going to come through with the one hand, through with the other hand, and tie it down. There is your double first throw. Again, flip the hand over, let it run parallel. You're going to bring the middle finger over and under, loop it through with the left hand as well, and pull it tight into a surgeon's knot. There it is. Okay, so that's reef knot, slip knot, and surgeon's knot on the hand tie. What you might notice when you are practicing is that you, you tie knots quite up in the air. And I want you to keep an eye on this tissue down here. You'll see that when you tie in the air and you're pulling on your, on your suturing material a lot, trying to get it where you want it to be, you're actually creating tension up in the air and moving your tissue and not working gently with the tissue. So I want to show you how to gently tie so that you can direct your suture down to where you want it to be without creating tension. You don't want to by mistake pull up towards you and then pull the suture out of the tissue or injure the tissue further. So again, let's try our first knot. Gently push it down and bring it into place with your index finger. Secure it gently with your index finger. The same with your second knot. Bring it down and secure it gently into place with your index finger. This becomes particularly important when tying at depth. Okay, now where not putting tension on the tissue becomes important is when you are suturing at depth, such as in the pelvis. So re to recreate suturing at depth, I've just taken a plastic bottle and cut off the base of it. And I've now already put my suture through and brought the needle end towards me. Now I've got the short end in my hand and these sort of sutures are better to do by hand than with an instrument because you're going to get a much better feel of how much tension you have on the suture at depth. So down goes the first suture into the base of the wound and flips over and down goes the second suture into the base of the wound. And what that does is it locks the suture down for us into the base of the wound and we felt exactly where it needs to go. So when you're practicing your suturing, 
be sure to use your index finger to guide the knot down to where you want it to be. Now for the second part of the demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do a suture tie with an instrument. So here I've got two sutures, a vicral suture, which is a braided polyglycolic acid synthetic absorbable suture. This length is 70 centimeters. It's a half circle with a 26 millimeter needle. And this is a two zero. When you open the packet, the suture material comes folded up like that and your needle will always be exposed. Place your needle holder onto the three quarter mark of that needle. So not at the tip, not at the base, three quarters from the sharp end and pull your suture material out. You can see the lovely length of the suture material. And when you look up close, you'll see how nicely braided that suture material is. So there's our first suture, that is a vicral suture, absorbable suture. Now I'm just going to safe this needle. Here we go. Safe, not going to injure anyone while I show you the next suture. So the next suture is a nylon 1-0 suture. This is a 100 centimeter length and it's a 90 millimeter, 3 eighths of a circle conventional cut needle. And when you open this packet, you'll immediately see there's a much larger needle in. This is a hand needle with a lovely long length of unbraided nylon. And when you look at this nylon, you can see it's very shiny and it doesn't look as plaited as the back. Right, so here I've got the nylon suture. I'm going to push it through my tissue, pull it towards myself, always keeping it within my field of vision so that I don't make, by mistake, poke somebody out of my field of vision. I use my needle holder to safe the tip so we don't cause any injuries. And you'll see that the suture material has quite a bit of memory. So it likes to remember how it was lying in the packet. Um, and it may be a little bit tricky to work with because of that. So just remember that it's different for each material. Now here I've got my nylon between my middle finger and my index finger extended. I've brought my piece up and I've created a four there. I'm going to wrap the index finger around, pull it through and guide it down with our hand onto the tissue. Now we're going to flip over the hand, lay it down, middle finger goes over the outside, under the inside and guide it down with our finger and secure it nicely into a reef knot. If you're going to do it with your left hand, same thing, suture between your middle finger and your thumb, extend your index finger, wrap around, pull through, pull it towards yourself, guide it down, flip over your left hand, two pieces lie parallel, middle finger goes over the outside, under the inside, and you pull it away from yourself and guide it down with your index finger to secure the knot. So that's the hand tie. If you would like to now do an instrument tie, you're going to think of it as a clockwise, anti-clockwise movement. So take your needle holder and go anti-clockwise around your suture material, anti-clockwise, and go and pick up the tail, bring the tail through, there's your first knot. Now to seal the knot you need to go clockwise, so you're going to go this way around, clockwise, go through, pick up your tail and close the knot. So just to show you again, anti-clockwise around, go and fetch the tail, pull it through and then clockwise around, fetch the tail, pull it through. Now for a surgeon's knot, you're just going to do it twice. So one, two anti-clockwise loops, fetch the tail, pull it through. One, two clockwise loops, fetch the tail, pull it through. So as you can see, you can't really stabilize the suture as much with your finger and get it precise positioning. 
with an instrument tie. So just bear that in mind. It's obviously also very difficult to do that at a date. And then to finish up, you're just going to cut your suture material at an appropriate length. And there you go. So thank you so much for listening to this hand tying and instrument tying workshop. And happy practicing.